Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Arfad and welcome to a brand new video In today's video I want to share with you how to actually Bible study uh, I've watched a lot of Bible study videos on YouTube And a lot of them I must say um, approach the Bible from a theological perspective And that should, uh, for Christians that is how they sh should be studying the Bible right I mean the Bible is a theological book and so how else would they be studying the scripture if it's, if it's not from a theological perspective? Um, and so, but there's one thing that I would like to recommend um, that they do actually one step further. And that is to also do the Bible study from a theolo theological perspective, but apply rigorous critical thinking uh, as well. And the literatures that I recommend today uh, devotional literatures and these are the literatures that I read as well and I use as well and so I've approached the Bible from the very um, from a very fundamental uh, manner uh, and I've also approached the Bible from a very very skeptical atheistic um, tendencies uh, kind of thing and I think um, it is best to actually present materials from both sides. Um, although the literatures that I will present, according to some people, will be liberal, right? But these are literatures that are being used by people that associate themselves with, like the Catholic Church, um, for example, the uh, like Reformed churches, so on and so forth. And so I thought I want to make this video just to put it out there. Um, present something different for Christians to actually explore um, not that they don't engage in critical biblical studies but for them to actually uh, I'll give example right for example even when you approach this text from a theological perspective there is something that you actually uh, is better for you to also apply some logical thinking uh, as well not that they're not being logical right to actually question yourself and question your beliefs so on and so forth and so, I'll go to the so-called gold standard. There are two gold standards. Yeah, this one, I would say the diamond standard. Because a lot of Christians who actually read from the New King James Version. And this is the NKJV. This NKJV is very cheap. It looks like it is expensive, right? Because it looks from afar, it looks like it's leather cover. Even though some people will definitely be able to tell that it's not leather. But it opens up, it has like a fabric here, and this is the, the presentation page, so on and so forth. And you have the KJV, NKJV. And the NKJV is still my favorite uh, Bible to read. Right? And so first things first, you need a great Bible. Now I'm saying great here because I'm not, uh, I'm not... I'm not doing this video from a very critical, uh, like, you know, all these, uh, you know, the King James uses manuscripts that are different from the RSV and RSV, so on and so forth, right? So I'm just using um, what the ordinary Christians out there will actually use and can afford. Um, oh, hopefully the microphone is okay. So King James, on a new King James, new King James, it's easy to read, easier to read. And so New King James, you probably also want to get the NIV. The NIV is also great. Um, but the King James is a lot of people use. And so I'll use the King James. And so you have a, the Bible now, right? Actually, you don't even need to buy a King James. Because if you were to buy the... Um, for example, if you were to buy the NIV Study Bible you already have the text of the Bible inside right so but one thing is that the NIV or most study Bibles are actually heavy they're very thick and they're very heavy you might want to get the uh, soft cover version I have here like for the Catholic Bible uh, soft cover version um, but for the most part a lot of this study Bible comes with hard covers and for some reason, the softer covers are more expensive than the hard covers. So might as well get the hard covers, right? It will last you longer. And so, if you get the NIV, you don't actually need the 
it's a separate Bible, right? Unless you're using different translation. Like for example, if you're an NIV person, then you don't need to get a, a separate NIV Bible. You can just get a Bible study because it contains the NIV text as well. Right, it contains the NIV text. It contains the NIV text and the commentaries. If you've never used, there's very slight commentaries or notes even. They're not really commentaries, they're just more like notes to explain what this verse is about. Right. So, for the most part, if you are a beginner and you just use it for devotional perspective, you don't really need, you don't really need to actually, you know, go into all these um, extended materials and so forth. And so, the study Bible is actually something that I will recommend. Uh, instead of go getting the ordinary Bible, because a lot of people would go for the more expensive one, the more premium one, the leather covers and so forth, assuming that they would actually read. Uh, but majority of people don't actually read because they want to keep their Bible nice and pristine. They want to pass it down through the next generation so on and so forth. Uh, but the first things first that they should do is to actually read. Read it as much as you can. And don't just read it, like uh, plainly read it. Read it and have a critical thinking, uh, have a critical thought as well when you read it. For example, when you read a passage that says something, question it. Uh, is it something that is logical? Is it something that makes sense? Is, is it something that is historical? You know, and if it's something that is not historical, what are you going to do about it? Okay, and so these are something that you want to actually or might actually um, be doing. And so the NIV study Bible, I would actually recommend. Um, I have no problem with any study Bible, right? Um, no major problem. I mean, there's a lot of major problems, like, but if you approach from a theological perspective, there's no problem, right? Because whatever translation you read, the reason there's a lot of translation is that it caters to different people because some people prefer the paraphrase Bible because they don't understand the literal ESV, for example, or they don't understand the so-called um, literal NRSV as well, right? Especially the ESV, you know, whereby the passage that they construct, they try to be true to the Greek, and so sometimes it, it is not really logical. Right, and so that's the problem. The ESV, um, not so much theological problem, but the NIV. Most people would would categorize it as devotional, evangelical, and so a lot of pastors actually use the NIV and the KJV, and so this is something that you want to get. Right, and so the next one is you need a dictionary. Okay, you need a dictionary of the Christian Church. You can get any Bible dictionary, um, but um, Dictionary of the Christian Church is something that I would recommend uh, because you already have the notes, right? So you don't need to go and find extra words, uh, but you want to find the Dictionary of the Christian Church and one unique way um, or the different thing that they do for the Christian, the Dictionary for the Christian Church is that they include the Church Fathers inside. Right, they include church fathers. For example, if you have uh, the, the word Messiah, you don't know what the word Messiah means. Right? And so you can find an example of the word Messiah uh, in here. And then they also tell you, like, you know, maybe the word Messiah is not a great example, but they will tell you uh, what is the, uh, the history, what does it mean back then, the history, so on and so forth. Any dictionary of the Bible will actually tell you uh, that as well. But if you just have to buy one, then I would recommend the, not necessarily the Oxford, because people would say it's liberal, right? But dictionary of the Christian church. Right? Because if you actually read, you know, even though dictionary is a reference, right? But if you actually read the dictionary of the Christian church, right? You will have a lot of knowledge about church history. That's the, the takeaway, right? Uh, because 
you also need to know your history. As Christians, you need to know your history as well, right? You need to know the central and the essential figures, right? Uh, about uh, your history, right? And the his the Diction of the Christian Church will not only give you history, it also give you the different religious uh, cult, for example. It will also present you the different denomination of Christianity, right? For example, if you do not know the Nazareans, you know, in Matthew, the, the, we have the word Nazareans. You don't know what this, this means, right? And so, you can go and find the Nazareans, right? And so, you do not need to get volume, multiple volumes. You just need to get a very concise one, right? Um, as a starter pack kind of thing, this video should probably be titled, Starter Pack to Bible Study, right? So, I think I'm going to title it, this video that. Start the pack. So first you need your Bible, you need a uh, study Bible, and then you need a dictionary. Right? Next thing, again, all the literatures are present here is from devotional perspective, right, except for this one, right? Because I do not have any other dictionary. Well, the other dictionary is also a liberal dictionary. People will not use it, right? But you probably get Holman Dictionary of the Christian Church. Um, Holman Dictionary or Zondervan Dictionary. These are very evangelical dictionary, evangelical oriented. Right? But just a disclaimer, I've not used those. Right? I, I've not even oh, seen those in person. Right? So the next one, actually, you need a commentary. And for aspiring theologian who wants to be you know as good as a theologian as uh, Johnny Mac right they might want to get his one volume commentary right he has multiple volumes but one volume commentary as a start and so Johnny Mac I mean a lot of people use Johnny Mac and a lot of these uh, Bible study videos that I've watched contains Johnny Mac Right, and so I got Johnny Mac <laughs> to present to you as well. Right, and, and so um, the commentaries, single volume commentaries, you should know that this is actually not lengthy at all, even though it's thick. But the discussion of the very single verse uh, itself, it's not lengthy. It will just give you a very brief. You know, it's just probably an, another two or three paragraphs extra or sentences extra, not paragraph, sentences extra of what you actually get in the study Bible. Right? And so, for the most part, I would not actually recommend a biblical commentary. I would just recommend a study Bible. Because the superior thing about study Bible is that it contains graphics, it contains maps, it contains different charts, timelines, so on and so forth. And so it will help you even more. And one volume commentaries are just packed with words. They're just packed with words. Right. <laughs> and so it will bore you. And it doesn't give you the verse of the Bible. Right. And so it is not helpful because you have to refer to your Bible and read, refer to Bible and read. But that's the point of biblical commentary, right? Any biblical commentary, unless you get like a single volume biblical commentary, whereby the author will actually have enough space to produce their own translation. Whether they translate from the English or from the Greek directly, you know, you have to read the preface if they mention it. But most, most critical commentary will be translating directly from the critical edition of the Greek. Right? And so, for example, the book of Proverbs, you get for this biblical commentary, you get probably two or three pages of introduction. And then before they begin with the commentary. Right? And so, you get the, the study Bible, it will be the same thing. Just that the commentary will be extra. Two or three sentences extra, right? Whether they make a significant difference, yeah. Sometimes they could make a significant difference. Um, you could probably understand what the author's interpretation of the verse are, or verses are. 
because even the notes, study notes in your study Bible, these are interpretations of the authors who actually wrote that uh, book of the Bible, for example. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there's one more literature that a lot of people do not use. Because when I watch all these study Bible videos, there's one literature that they actually uh, is actually non-existent in their uh, Bible study videos. So whether they use it or not, I'm not sure. But because they, I mean, from just from the video itself, it's missing. And probably they didn't use it. Because this tool, if you use it, you would definitely include it in your Bible study. And that is actually the introduction to the New Testament or introduction to the Old Testament. Here I have introduction to the New Testament. The cradle, the cross, and the crown. This is very evangelical. Very, very evangelical. You can even see here. All right. The, the, uh, this is, you know, for Muslim, this is anathema. If you can't put the face of a prophet like this. All right. Um, at first, I do not want to get this because it is unbefitting for the Prophet of Allah to be depicted like this. Not that this is Jesus, right? I mean, who knows who, what Jesus looks like, right? But I still get it. <laughs> I still got it because I want to know what um, people like uh, Kostenberger and, and a few others actually mention, actually talk about these different books. What are their beliefs about these different books? And I like to compare literatures from the liberal side and also compare literatures from the evangelical side. Right? Uh, or, you know, some people would not claim this scholar as evangelical or so, something like that, you know. But at least literatures that are written from a devotional uh, pers perspective that has devotional inclination. Because some Christian scholars also, you know, they're Trinitarians, but they, when they wrote, when they write the introduction, uh, like Raymond Brown, for example, you know, he's, he tried his best to play by the historical method. Right? Um, but we shouldn't neglect the theological method. And so, my humble library is filled with evangelical literatures uh, as much as with liberal literatures as well. So I can kind of compare and contrast and see which one has the better argument Right. And so you, you have pictures from both sides. Right. And so a lot of um, the videos that I've watched, uh, when they actually speak about this, uh, when they try to refute their opponent, right, they actually have not even read what the opponent actually talk about. Uh, the literatures that the opponent refers to, so on and so forth, they've not actually read it. Right. And so we have to be fair, we have to read from both sides, right? Because at the end of the day, if, if we are really doing this for, you know, to find out the truth, for example, then we shouldn't be one-sided, we should be two-sided, right? At least that's how I see it. Some people will disagree, right? Like for me, I have no say in this thing, right? Not that I will have a say, but I have no say in this thing, I'm a Muslim, right? So I have no say in this thing. But I still took the time to actually study from both sides and see which one is actually, which one makes more sense to me, right? Um, and so, yeah, I look at both literatures. And I'll do another video whereby I present from the liberal perspective, <laughs> right? And so, for example, the, the Cradle and the Crown, the introduction to the New Testament, for example, it also contains words, but there are those that contain pictures as well. But this is a thousand page full of text and footnotes. Right? People would think that, I oh, would, sorry, you can see. But this is a thousand page full of text and footnotes. I just flip so you can see. There's no pictures here as far as I can see. There's no pictures here. There's thousand pages full of text. Extended bibliography. Right, you get your index at the back. Yeah, so, but this expound every single book of the New Testament. I'll put this down. Um, and so, P. 
people would say that oh, this is very boring so on and so forth but if you really really want to to know and find out and go deep like really really deep you know i mean for really really deep you have to go to one volume commentary right and read monographs uh, which i will not recommend in this video because this is more like a, a starter pack kind of video right and so i do not want to make this video too long because i want to make another video after this so first thing first i will summarize um, if you can get just a Bible study, you actually do not need to get a single, uh, just the Bible itself. Right? Um, pe some people will actually say that, oh, this is the Word of God. And so you shouldn't have anything that is non-Word of God inside here. Right? But, this, but you should think that this is actually not the Word of God. Right? This is a translation of the Word of God. It is not the Word of God. I mean... Suppose we approach this from a Christian perspective, right? But this is not the Word of God. This is actually the translation of the Word of God. If you want the Word of God, then you have to go to the Greek. Because that is actually the Word that God revealed. Right? Whether through inspiration, through the Holy Spirit, according to Christian theology, right? To the disciples. And so this is actually not the Word of God. This is a translation of the word of God. So we have to be critical in what we say. We have to say things correctly. Right? And so it is incorrect actually to say that this is the word of God. It is the same for example if I have a, an English translation of the Quran. I will not call this the word of God. No. This is a translated word of God. And every translation is an interpretation. So technically, I'm not reading the Word of God. I'm reading the translated Word of God, which is not the Word of God, because every translation is an interpretation. It contains the translator's own understanding and exposition of the text. And if you know Greek, you'll know that it is impossible to translate word for word the Greek into English. Okay, so this is not the Word of God. This is a translated Word of God. So, if you go to the Greek, is the critical edition the Word of God? It contains the Word of God, right? Because there are many different manuscripts. And if you actually look at the, the variant readings, do you count the variant readings as the Word of God? Right? That's up for you to decide. Right? For me, it is still the Word of God because you don't know whether the variant readings is in the autographs or the primary text is in the autographs you don't know right because you don't have the autographs but anyway you can just get the translated um, word of god so to speak and you do not need to actually have some emotional attachment to the bible because you're not reading the bible in greek you're reading the bible in english Right. It's different if you actually read the Bible in Greek. You can somewhat say that I'm reading the Word of God. Right? Because any primary text and critical edition of the, the variant readings could be in the autographs or they could not be. Right? But we don't know. So we can easily say that the Greek, at least we can say that the Greek is actually the Word of God. Uh, according to Christian, right? But the, the translation... Is not the word of God. It's a translated word of God. So do not have any emotional attachment, right? You do not need to get a spend, you know, almost a thousand bucks to buy a Shila. You can just get the um, the study Bible, right? It will serve you better, right? So if the notes are not enough for you. You can go to the commentary. This is a single volume commentary. Obviously, you can go to uh, multiple volume commentaries, but this is a starter pack, right? So, commentary. You need a dictionary. If you do not have enough to, to buy a dictionary, just get a very cheap dictionary. This is about 20 bucks. But this is about 23 bucks. 23 bucks US. You can see. It's very cheap. Right? 
um, maybe stuff yourself for a day and you'll be to buy you'll be able to buy this right <laughs> and of of course the introduction to the new testament and the old testament i'll just give you the new testament for that as an example right so ladies and gentlemen when reading the bible from uh, you have to read from a critical perspective albeit you're reading it from a, a devotional perspective or you're reading it from you know a non-devotional perspective it is always nice to actually read um, with a critical uh, mind and not just believe uh, that this is the word of god so you don't need to be critical no theologians are critical theologians they are critical in their thinking uh, a lot of people mistaken that theologians actually do not have critical thinking right um, whereby they just take every verse and be devotional about it. You know, theologians, uh, they use critical thinking analysis as well. Right? Um, a lot of people who, from the outside, they look at all these theologians, devotional theologians, for example. Right? They thought that these theologians, they don't know historical methods, so on and so forth, but they do know. They do know. But these people are top guns, you know, even though you don't, you don't agree with them. But these people are actually smart. They're smarter than all of us, right? Which is why they're able to produce literatures like this. If they're not smart, they will not be able to produce literatures like this, right? And so they are smart. And it is worth reading what they say. Even though you disagree with them, right? Doesn't mean just because you disagree with them, that doesn't mean that they're not as smart as you, or that you're smarter than them. No, that's a false analogy, right? People can be smarter than you, and you still disagree with them, right? Um, and so, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you on my next video. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.